Are you here to join me a while longer? Or are we ready to get this show on the road? Wait a minute, I... You sure about that this time? We ain't coming back for a while. Well, all right then. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. The paths we're following are slow going, so you might as well keep your ears open and listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn Legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame them. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others, to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk. Said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legate is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. All right, people. Been a long couple of weeks, but here we are. Zion. I know your feet hurt. I know you're tired, but I need everyone's mind on the trail ahead. Ain't the trail ahead worries me, Jed. Those descents we made through that slot canyon back up there. Ain't no way we're getting back out the way we come. And then what? God damn it, Stella heard you the first time. And the 15th, too. The new Canaanites will know a way. And if they don't, we've got the maps on our friend's Pip-Boy over there. Enough lollygagging. Get moving. And keep an eye out for tribals. Sorry to bother you with reality, old Jed. Who cares if we can't get back out the way we come? That's not a problem. Shh. Hold on. Fuck off. I'm busy. I could swear Leave I heard me be. something up here. Come on, come on. No time to waste.
Hoy, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. Wow, Joshua will want to hear about this. Joshua Graham, he leads our tribe. Thanks to him, the dead horses are strong and safe from our enemies. He'll want to talk to anyone coming up from Southways. I guess that means just you now. Come, I can take you to him. Hoy, white legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. Wow, Joshua will want to hear about this. I mean the lands beyond the valley. The place where the cities never fell. Where people don't live in tribes and forage just to survive. Joshua keeps saying it isn't paradise out there, but how can it not be, compared to this? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Joshua will want to know about you. Please, go to our camp on the Eastern Virgin. 
Tell him how you came to be here. Good sists, maybe while you're there, you can tell me about where you came from, yeah? What can I tell you? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately... Whew, my guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. Bighorners are communal. One missing calf and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These bighorners go crazy for the stuff. That's great. I'll help any way I can. What can I tell you? Mostly it's the mountain bighorn. My guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere. If that calf doesn't turn... You might try... White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. That's what Joshua said. White legs came down from Great Salt Lake in force. Fell on New Canaan before they could mount a defense. Joshua found some of the survivors led by a man named Daniel. Most of them have fled the valley, but Daniel stayed on with the Sorrows tribe. He and Joshua have been arguing over whether to stand and fight the White Legs, or take the Sorrows and the Dead Horses out of the valley. That's the weird part. Normally the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. What can I tell you? Ask away. He's been the chief of our tribe since he came back to the valley. He went off to the civilized world years ago to fight a war. That didn't go well. You see his face, you'll understand. I don't know. He doesn't talk about it much. Maybe. But how can two civilized tribes fight over something as small as a dam? Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> really? That's... my gods. Must be some mighty civilized folks who built that. <laughs> now, you sound like Joshua. He always tells me that tribal life is better. That I should stay here and forget the outside world. Ask away. What can I tell you? Our advanced scouts leave chalk signs to mark places rich with game. I'm not a full scout yet, so I follow the marks and guide the hunters. Dead horses mark ourselves to commemorate our hunts. When a hunter takes a great beast, or when a youth goes on his first hunt, he gets a tattoo. We came up in the land of the dead horse, though why the back when folks called it that, I got no hint. We raided. We fought. We lost. Our enemies drove us back into Zion, and we would have died if it hadn't been for Joshua. Joshua and his Kaisar. When Joshua first came to us, he was servant to a man he called Kaisar. He led his master's armies, and we were ready to follow him into war. Then he lost his master's army to a tribe called Ensiar, the Sunset People. When he returned, he was as you saw him, burned, broken, but changed. He led us away from Kaisar, led us to our own destiny in Zion. If it wasn't for Joshua, the dead horses would still be the whipping boys of the Zion Valley. He taught us how to hold our territory, to protect ourselves. He guided us away from Kaisar, and showed us how Kaisar would have destroyed us. Little bit. I met some of their missionaries a few times, but I've never been to their city. Joshua could tell you more. Or Daniel, I imagine. We decorate our clubs with them to honor Joshua Graham. They were the weapons of his old tribe, so now they are ours. Can't say they seem that dangerous to me, but Joshua says they won the West. Only a little. I was very young. He was different. Prouder, yes, but harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Well, because they're our enemies. What else would we do? They take our land, they kill our scouts, they poach our hunting grounds. Ask away. What can I tell you? Tactics? You know I'm not much of a fighter, right? What can I do? Go with fortune, friend. Hold up. See that log over there? Take a closer look. There might be some good stuff tucked in there. <laughs> 